see to the aimless I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me, I exist to write my own story I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory, yeah Don't want a life that is complacent or possibly boring, yeah Just want a life that is worth every day exploring, yeah my whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great. yeah, yeah. yeah technology folks and it fails at the most inopportune time thank you so much for joining this show for today we got a good one for you folks today where we're going to be talking all things detroit lions news and rumors and have a good time at doing so i got my buddy my pal mr dan the man what's going on dan mike it's been a busy day and a great day to be here so thanks for having me on it's always great to have Dan on. Folks, if you didn't know, we had some technical issues, and I don't know what happened. I really don't know, so I had to reset, <laughs> and we're back on, though. It is, what, it only an eight-minute delay, so we are good to go from that standpoint. Appreciate everybody coming in. Brent, Paul, Grandizer, Mofo, Cy Gray. What's up, Cy? Weston Lion in the building. It's been a minute, Cy. I haven't seen you in a while. Huggy Bear in the building. James King. Everybody in the building. Dan the Man. I don't know if you've seen the clip of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers war room, but uh, there was a player that coveted uh, Epic 19, and it rhymes with Mac Damble. Yeah, I, I saw the clip. I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before, whenever it came out. And to be fair, Mike, I was really surprised that Bucks and NFL media allowed this to get out there just because nobody wants to know if you know you were targeting somebody that didn't get it. I think you can even watch the Bucks staff when they're getting interviewed during it kind of catch themselves and say, hey, you know, it worked out great for us. But the fact that when you see them uh, interacting with each other, they clearly targeted – Campbell with the 19th pick. They were hoping Detroit would go Cansey so they could get Campbell. I mean, I think either way, they were happy with who they got. But I think all those saying that, hey, you could have got Campbell, you know, 40 picks later, 20 picks later, whatever it is, that's the thing about the NFL draft. NFL GMs only give out information they want to get out. Just like Gibbs were finding out more and more he might not have been around much longer if we didn't take him when we did. And that's the thing about the draft. A lot of misinformation, a lot of smoke and mirrors. And when people come out and say, you could have got better value later taking this guy, it's not always the case. It's BS, folks. Just because the Mel Kuypers and Todd McShay say that's the way it's got to be, they are right now. They are demanding that we must agree with their big boards and not what the own team's big boards are. Folks, we all have different big boards. You and I, Dan, we all have different ones. And guess what? Teams coveted Jack Campbell. Why? Because Jack Campbell is a stud. He's a certified stud, okay? And he's an absolute G. And there's a reason why we talked about him on this channel a lot, and that's because he was a damn good linebacker. Damn good. 6'5", big body, can do it all. And guess what? When the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coveted him, it was not just the Detroit Lions. And it just goes to show that sometimes you got to sit back, wait a little bit. When the picks happen, don't overreact. Don't underreact. Let the smoke settle. And then you see, hey, Jameer Gibbs, it wasn't bad. Oh, Jack Campbell, it wasn't bad. Matter of fact, if you ask a lot of front offices, they'll say the Detroit Lions... At a kick-ass draft. Hell, you're here in front off say the Lions had the best offseason so far of all the NFL teams, Dan. You know, it's hard to find any real faults with something we did or didn't do, you know, at this point in the offseason. And, Mike, I would put it at you. Is there anybody you thought, man, we would have been vastly different if we had gotten this player or we should have never taken that player? At least from my perspective, you know, I was glad they didn't go for Ramsey because I think – just maybe from a fit yeah. as far as what this staff and what the front offices want. 
you know, it's nothing against Ramsey. He's awesome. I think we all agree that. But whether or not he would have been awesome here with this team, that's something completely different. Uh, you know, and I just think they have constructed this thing so well. It, you know, I know I, I think my floor for next year is 10 wins. My ceiling's 13 and probably will be somewhere in between. But Detroit's, if you look at them on paper at least, they're one of the most complete teams in the NFL right now. I, like you said, you know, you, you what do you look at? And a lot of people were as mad that we didn't get Jalen Ramsey. I was opposite. I said, good. I didn't want to give draft picks to get Jalen Ramsey. I said I was happy with not getting the trade. A lot of people hit me up and said, no, no, no. And what happens, folks? What happens? You get Cameron Sutton, cornerback from the Pittsburgh Steelers. He comes in. He's going to do his thing. Emmanuel Mosley from the San Francisco 49ers was balling before he got injured. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, they had a plan, and the plan was to build the defense the way they see it. Yeah, they tried to do Jalen Ramsey, but guess what, folks? Jalen Ramsey demanded a much bigger paycheck than what we have to do, and they have to get draft capital. We didn't have to give draft capital for these guys. We just got them in free agency, and it worked out well. And if you look in the draft, could you have gotten different players? They absolutely you could have gotten different players, right? I like B. John Robinson. I had him as RB1, but you weren't going to get him at 12. You'd have to take him at 6, and if you were to get B. John Robinson, that removes that Sam Laporta pick at 34, who they coveted as well. So, from 6 to 12, you get Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta. That's pretty good for the Detroit Lions Hall right there. And again, sometimes you just got to sit back, let the smoke clear, and it looks pretty good for our beloved Detroit Lions, Dan. You know, as you know, Mike, I've been a fan since, man, maybe the late 70s, I guess, as far as the Detroit Lions. And other than a couple brief moments in the 80s, you'd really have to go back to the early to mid nineties to find a time where I think the the fan base, the team are reflective of such an upward swing. I mean, it's going to be hard to find any kind of media, whether it's national or local that doesn't have their eyes focused on the Detroit lions in a meaningful way for the first time since the mid to early nineties, they seem to be fairly complete everywhere across the board. And I would say this, if you look at just the NFC, does it really that outlandish of thought? to say the Detroit Lions have a chance, win a few playoff games, and be in the Super Bowl. They just don't see a team out there that looks vastly superior to them in the NFC. Is it outlandish to say that? No, I don't think so. Is it outlandish to say that Regina is the best girl of all time? It's not outlandish to say that. That's my girl right there. There's things out there that you can say that is legit, and I do believe that the Detroit Lions' chances right now in the NFC are pretty damn good. What other teams do you see that, you know, can't hurt the Detroit Lions? San Francisco 49ers, the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Those are the two teams. Maybe Dallas and Seattle in there. Other than that, Detroit is a pretty damn good team, and you look at the roster in comparison right now. We damn near beat the Seattle Seahawks last year. If we could have just made one stop, we'd probably win that game. Folks, we got DBs that can make a stop now. So I think our roster is upgraded from there. When you look at the Dallas Cowboys, yes, they got a good offense and defense. I think our offense is just a little bit better than their offense. I do think their defense is better than our defense, but it's a close. It will be a close game. Philadelphia Eagles, same thing. And they went all the way to the Super Bowl. And week one, we go against the Kansas City Chiefs, who did win the Super Bowl. And I think... If you look at a lot of people, even like Mike Valenti, who's a Lions hater, he says, I'm taking the Lions. Because you can see what they've done here. You can see what they've built here with the talent upon this roster, Dan. And so I am with you. I don't think it's out the realm of possibility, and I love how they beefed up this team in the offseason, in free agency, and in the draft. They did the right <coughs> things. Now, it came out today that under 25, players under 25, the Detroit Lions, the best of under 25, the top 25 under 25. Detroit Lions have two of those players, Panay Sewell and Amon Ross St. Brown. Considering that right, there's a 32 teams and the Lions got two in the 25, that's pretty damn good drafting, Dan. It is, and you look at how this team, for the most part, has been constructed, and it has not until this offseason been via free agency. It's been through trades and the draft. I'm a little surprise. Hutchinson didn't get on there. I get, you know, James Houston probably didn't offer enough sample size to really warrant more attention to the, be on the top 25. But across the board, whether they're on this list or not, 
it's going to be easy for anybody, whether you're a Lions fan or not, to look at this team and say, yeah, this guy can play, that guy can play, this is a great pick here, that's a great pick there. I mean, Holmes and company have done a phenomenal job constructing this team and quickly. Mike, I would say this to you or anybody watching the video in the chats or whatever. Think back to just two years ago when Justin Tucker nailed that, you know, whatever it was, 79-yard field 66 goal. 66-yard field goal that destroyed our souls, yes. Right, right. And how probably deflated everybody felt about the team. Here we go again, always again. It's going to be another, you know, two years from now we'll be getting rid of these coaches, you know, that GM and how different things are really here if you're the Lions fan just two years later. Oh, man. And that First off, that 66-yard field goal was a kick in the balls. It was, And then, then it went through. The pain went through my balls into my soul and knocked my soul out of my body. That's how bad that kick was. Guess what, folks? Those type of kicks, I think we're going to be doing to teams this year. I think we're going to be knocking the souls out of people. You know, fans of teams who think that it's going to be easy to roll on the beloved Detroit Lions this year, I think they're going to be feeling their souls kicked into because the Detroit Lions do uh, got a kick-ass, and I mean kick-ass roster right now, talent, offense, defense, and special teams. Let's talk about rookie minicamp Dan, one guy that stood out, tight end Sam Laporta, Iowa. He looked unstoppable in rookie minicamp. Folks, in the comment section, do you love the fact that he looked unstoppable? Why for yes and end for no? Give me your thoughts on Sam Laporta, who that was the one you know, pick I had. I, I This guy must do good for me. I, I think when we look back, say, two to three years from now, when the, most of these rookies right now have been in the league a little while, we're going to look back and ever question – why anybody had any kind of raised eyebrows about the Lions trading back from 6 to 12 to get Gibbs and to get Laporta. In essence, essence, that's what they got because both of these guys, if they play to form, you know, nothing unforeseen happens. They're going to be route changers and defense changers for Goff or whoever the quarterback is at that point. Because I'm going to say this, the one thing I do love about our staff, and start with the GM on down, They have the plan for each of these picks. You look at Laporta. You look at Gibbs. What do they do? Great short intermediate routes where they can get catches and get yak, yards after the catch. You look at what they did on defense, and same thing. The majority of the defensive picks were all lined up at forcing teams. You can't go up to the middle against Detroit anymore. You're going to have to try to run out wide, and we're going to cut off the middle. One of the bigger weaknesses of us. But as far as the offense, I'd say when it's all put together, is there any reason to believe this couldn't be the number one to two or three offense in the entire NFL next year? Absolutely, Vash Darwin, for sure. Like the show. Let's get to 50 likes, 14 away. I think you can do that. Regina, you have better hit that like button because if you haven't hit that like button, it may not be hitting on you tonight. Just an FYI, I'm sure you will. We're going to have some fun. But I agree with you. I, th- I love hearing that Sam Laporta – was doing good. This is the one player I'm watching, not because I, you know, the the pick, right? Because when you spend the 34th pick on a tight end, you want this guy to blow up. So I really want this guy to blow up. I think that would be fantastic. If he comes in here and he ends up being better than TJ Hawkinson, I'm going to do backflips. I'm going to think that Brad Holmes is an absolute genius, and that's what we need him to be. We need If we can get that extra player, too, on offense, and it's going to help out with Jamison Williams being out the first six weeks, another piece for Jared Goff to throw that football away while that great offensive line holds for him. So, And he can get those yards after catch like you're talking about. You get those big plays and first downs. This offense continue to thrive. Ends up being a fantastic pick. So I love hearing that. Broderick Mike, Martin. Throw, go real, ahead. Go real ahead. quick. Let me throw one thing at you, and I should have brought this up earlier. You know, I didn't get to watch a lot of the mini camp, just, you know, the video we can get. But I will say this. If that video holds up to be true and the norm for him, he's already a vastly better blocker in the run game than TJ Hawkinson ever will be. It's just hot came out of college being billed as a run blocker who could do some catching and nothing proved to be further from the truth. In my opinion, he struggled hawk at times coming out of routes and breaks. And as far as the run blocking, it just never was really a strength of his. Laporta, if you watch him, even against Campbell, and Campbell's a 
let's make no bones about it. That is a massive dude, a massive dude with a motor and some muscle. Huge. And Porta blocked him incredibly well, I thought. A guy who hasn't really been taught up for what they do at the NFL level, the subtle nuances with the hand placement, driving the thumbs, things like that. You know, he's already doing that stuff, in my opinion, two, three times better than Hawk is. And Hawkson is, you know, whatever, fourth, fifth year. So that's a big win for Detroit. It will be a huge win. And I agree with you. I love the fact that he did make my guy, Jack Campbell, look foolish because that's not just some practice squad defender. Jack Campbell's a stud, all right? This guy is going to be a starting linebacker for the Detroit Lions, and I think he's going to be a damn good one in the NFL. So when he's doing that in practice, it gives me hope. I like seeing that, and I actually cannot wait to watch those guys go at it throughout all of training camp, in which I will be at training camp, folks. So if you guys would like to show up in training camp, pictures taken, hang out, talk to Detroit Lions, Make sure you're there for training camp. I'll be there uh, repping LNU and having a good time doing so. So get ready for that. Also, Broderick Martin, he was on there doing his thing, big as advertised, big body, looking pretty damn good. His intelligence and IQ was off the charts, learning things really quick. Very, you know, He was a player. People said, why would you trade up and get for? It's already looking pretty good there, Dan. You know, you and I talked about a number of times, there was no way the Lions were going to be able to keep 100 draft picks on next year's roster. So the fact they traded up to him just meant they knew somebody else was going to target this kid sooner than they could get to him. So go and get him now. You know, do what you got to do. You know, we'll know more once we get throughout the season, but at least watching what we could of rookie camp, I'll say this. You know, I know one of the first times you and I talked, we talked about James Houston, who at that point, hadn't really been on the field. I'm not going to say Martin's going to be that kind of impact guy, but I I will say this, based on what we saw there and what I'm perceiving his progression will be over his career, man, it wouldn't be surprise me if by the tail end of the season, maybe the playoffs, if not next year, this guy's a starter. And you look at the interior defensive line to, to stop the run, we, we still have questions about pass rush in the interior. Okay, yeah. but I don't think there's much question about stopping the run. Aleem McNeil, Broderick Martin, and Joshua Pascal, they're going to get it done there to reduce the amount of damage that we get in offensive run game. And that's something that was a problem for the Lions last year, whether it be the running back or dual threat quarterback like Justin Fields. I think we do have a nice amount of players to help reduce that rush game against our defense in which, look, if you run the football, stop the run, what does that mean generally? You what? Win the game, right? So, I mean, that's how it is. So they got it here. We got Montgomery. We got Jameer Gibbs to run the football. And we got Mr. Lee McNeil, Broderick Martin, and Joshua Pascal to help reduce stopping that run. So the Lions got the formula right there. Another good player was undrafted rookie Muhammad. I destroy his name every single time. So I'm going to just go, go, go Muhammad there. He did every single carry in minicamp, bowling ball, stud. He got tired by the end of it, but the guy was taking all the carries for the Lions football team. I think he makes the team. I think he's going to be in front of Jamar Jefferson, maybe in front of Jason Cabinda. Thoughts on Muhammad Ibrahim. I think I destroyed his name, but that's what it is. Undrafted rookie running back. He'll be the number three back coming out of uh, preseason. So when we go to the regular season, I think he's number three on the depth chart, and I think there's a real possibility you'll see some three-back sort of uh, backfields with Detroit, with him being back there, Montgomery, and then you know Gibbs uh, goes out wide basically as a flanker or a slot receiver. So I, I think they got incredible value from this kid. I get running backs, you know, we've talked about it the last few years, just aren't as valued as they once were. Mm -hmm. This kid had been playing in the 80s or 90s. He probably would have been a third, second-round pick, something like that. But we're not in that time frame. So Lions were able to get a real steal. We got Paul Geinder upgraded membership to the Silver League. Paul is an absolute <clears throat> G and a certified stud. So I appreciate you for doing that, Paul. Love it, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, he's got that bowling ball mentality, and I think that's a good backup to Montgomery. See, if Montgomery yeah. were to get hurt or dinged up, you have a guy that has that bowling ball 
type to his game like Montgomery, right? That TJ Duckett, I'm just going to run it down your throat. Joyke Bell kind of before, you know, he became really popular. He was more of that running downfield type of thing. So I love what he brings to the Lions. A lot of players were injured. Jameer Gibbs didn't practice due to ankle precautionary. Brian Branch didn't practice. I think he was doing ankle as well. Precautionary. And obviously, Hedden Hooker, who we're going to talk about in a minute, didn't practice because of his Achilles. So, thoughts on those injuries there besides Hedden Hooker, which we all knew? Gibbs, I'd say that's uh, the Wayne Fonts winking at the cameras during the preseason saying, you know, hey, he's got a cold or a flu. I, yep. I just don't think they were putting him out there. There's no reason to. They're, they're sold on what he can do. Branch. Maybe that's a little different. Maybe he did have something going on with his ankle. But most of these guys all have a chip on their shoulder, just like, uh, you know, go go through the list. Everybody's, you know, downplayed him, said, hey, you shouldn't be drafted here. Uh, you should have been drafted higher or whatever. But the one thing I will say for almost everybody on this rookie class, they're all going to come in with a chip on the shoulder because they felt they should have been a little bit higher. Yeah. I'm not worried about the injuries at all. This is minicamp. This is rookie right. minicamp. You know, this is not training camp or anything where you're like you're taking significant injuries at all. So I like I was telling my subscribers, I'm sure you said the same thing to yours. It's probably not that big of a deal, so don't worry about it. Now, if it lingers into training camp and then we're getting into preseason, that's a little bit different story. But I think right now would not worry about it. Hennon Hooker was praised for his leadership skills, how he conducted himself in rookie, rookie minicamp. Now a lot of fans and subscribers can see what we're talking about when it comes to Hennon Hooker and his leadership ability, that he's a pro's pro. He's a a, a leader of men and, and a great influence on the locker room, and I think he'll be a great addition to the quarterback room. Thoughts on what Hennon Hooker brought, at least for his leadership skills, over minicamp? I think he's everything you could want. I mean, he's going to be the person that's first on the practice field, first in the film room, you know, last to leave. He's going to set the bar for whatever he can control. He can't control his injury. He can't control his place on the depth chart. But what else do you want from a backup quarterback than somebody who's going to lead by example and hopefully get much, much better? You know, I think the Lions are in a great position at quarterback now because he's going to – Hooker is going to put some pressure on Goff to maintain what he did last year and even supersede it as far as play on the field. Because if not, the Lions might be turning to him. Hooker knows he has to play even better and better when he's healthy to have a chance to, you know, whether it's with the Lions or whoever, to get a uh, starting spot in the NFL. So you got competition. You've got two people trying to get better. Hooker, there's no downside. He's not going to be a distraction. You know, he's, he's a good find. Folks, we're in the mailbag segment right now. If you got questions, do hashtag Lions, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag Dan, hashtag Mike, hashtag Regina, whatever you want to do, it gets my attention. If I miss your question, you just simply put it in there. Again, copy, paste. I will eventually get to get to it. I'm not trying to be a prick. I'm just missing it. Why? Because I'm soon to be 38 years old, and that's what happens when you're older. First, here from Sloan's Head, what is your thoughts on the right guard right now? I am really hoping that Halapuri Vati Vaitai is going to come in, be healthy, stay for that right guard position because before he was injured, he was absolute stud at the right guard position. I talked to Lomas Brown, and that was before the injury. Lomas said that he was he thought that Halapuri Vati Vaitai was the best player on the offensive line when he was healthy. That guy knows offensive linemen, and he did do well. So hopefully he comes in, stays healthy, and holds it down for the Detroit Lions. Graham Glasgow will be the backup, in my opinion. And then, obviously, who we drafted there, he'll be kind of you know, the depth player. So yep. I think that's how it's going to go. What's your thoughts on R RG? You know, if uh, he can go, uh, Evan Brown last year basically replaced him. Is probably a little bit better pass protection, but vastly inferior when it comes to run blocking. You know, Vitae is incredibly superior in the run game. And what's Campbell and company like to do? They like to run instead of play action. So having him in there would, would take this offensive line and run game to another level, in my opinion. Weston Lyon says, if you're down, if you go down the list of draft picks, every one of them could replace someone on the present squad. It does make a lot of sense if you do go through it. The running back replaced who? DeAndre Swift. Jack Campbell, who does it replace? 
probably Derek Barnes, in my opinion. You go in Sam Laporta, Shane Zilstra out. You go in there with Brian Branch. That could be interesting there. Could that be a Melifonwu or a, a Tracy Walker? Hennon Hooker, obviously the quarterback. Broderick Martin, Levi and Uzurike. So if you can don't go down the line, I kind of concur, and that's what you want. You want to be able to draft, and you know, you're not drafting because you have to draft a position. You're drafting just to upgrade. And I think that's what they, they're at that position now or the roster where they can just draft to upgrade and let players go. Will Tracy Walker be ready for the season? I do believe so, Jonathan, 100%. Your thoughts on that? Uh, will he be ready? Probably from a physical standpoint, will he be a little behind, probably mentally having to catch up and get acclimated to his knee, get faith back in his knee? Sure, that's going to take some time. Um, I do. I will say this, as far as Branch replacing somebody, I think Walker, if he's not careful, he might be on the outside looking in. It's very possible, too. Yeah, if he doesn't get his stuff together, he would be the odd man out. It's not going to be Kirby Joseph. It's not going to be Gardner Johnson at this point. And you look at it, he's the guy. So you, he's got to look out. You're 100%. Cy Gray, my man, says, hashtag lines. What are your feelings about the outside linebacker and defensive tackle position? I'll go DT. I'll let you go OLB. DT, I feel like they need probably another guy, even though they just picked one up for pass rushing capabilities. Other than that, I'm good with with run stuffing. What's about OLB for you? I think Houston and Anzalone, if, if you're looking at a three-backer set, I don't, don't see how you can get Houston off the field. And, again, I've referred to this a lot. You looked at the last two games uh, last season, the Lions made Houston a starter, moved them to the outside backer, even had them drop into coverage, especially against Green Bay quite often. So I think that's just going to be the f- future. They see what he can do, how rare he is. You're not wanting to get him off the field. Hashtag Mike and Dan. C.J. Moore was a key player on special teams. Who's that back-end roster guy to take his spot, and who do you let Gibbs do field well, field kicks? Do you let him do field kicks? Back end of the roster. That's I can think Khalif Raymond. That's kind of what I'm thinking right there if you're, you're doing kick returns, like something of that nature. Special teams, you're looking more like Jalen reeves Maven to make some special teams, if that's more coverage unit, not in return. I don't know if they do like a special from special teams, a special play that C.J. Moore did where he took that one and gained like 28-some yards on fourth down. I'm not sure who they'd go to there, but I'm thinking Khalif Raymond. Could they do Jameer Gibbs in, in kick returns? I guess they could. I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> that's me personally. I wouldn't right. do it. What do you think? Maybe if the game's on the line, you yeah. know, especially a big game, you know, but as he's not a bigger guy to begin with. So they're going to yeah. be careful with the snap counts and how many hits, direct hits. Uh, you know, especially if you're talking a punt return or a kickoff return where you're giving everybody a running start to go kill the dude. I just don't see them putting him out there unless it's an absolute game necessity moment. Let's see. Do you think James Houston will be dominant? I think he'll be damn good. I don't know what he mean by dominant. He's not going to be on the field the whole time because he wasn't last year, but he's definitely going to be a game changer. I think he can get double-digit sacks this year and be an absolute force, but dominant, oh, you're talking like all pro. I don't know about that, but damn good player. What do you think? I'm going to take Houston to get somewhere between 9 and 14 sacks this year. I can see I just that. think because in some of that, let me preface this, some of it because I think we will be able to shut down the run vastly better than last year. You're going to force more and more teams into obvious passing situations, which plays into his hands. You look at the NFC North, and just about all the teams are, I think, going to struggle to run against Detroit. Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but that means they're going to have to rely on the pass. And, again, if that's who you're facing more often than not is your own division, that's going to give him a lot of free passes at getting after the quarterback. Great name by Games Dean, hashtag Lions. Do you think there is any chance we trade for a defensive tackle before the season? I know there's been rumors. Personally, I don't think they're going to trade for an Oliver of Quinn and Williams. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to be stuck with what they are. That's my personal thought. What do you think, Dan? You come down to the asking price. I've heard conversations of one or two first-round picks. I don't see the Lions doing that. Maybe a fourth or third rounder, I could see them doing that. So a team would have to get or really have to have a need to unload somebody to take a third or fourth rounder. So we'll see what happens. 
Hashtag smash the hole. I cannot wait to see the competition and see who makes this team, man. I'm with you 100% right there. Training camp's going to be fun to see these guys battle for spots because the battles are going to be legit, and there's going to be players who cut that are going to get picked up by other teams in, on this squad for sure. Mike, besides week one, what is the best away game to take a road trip to attend? Ooh. I would like to I, – I know everyone hates the Dallas Cowboys, but I'd love to go to Dallas and see the stadium there. That would be one, and the rivalry is always hot over there. So that would say Dallas. What about you? Uh, Lambeau Field, just because I think you're going to be able to be one of the few people alive that could say you can go to Lambeau Field and see back-to-back -back Lions wins there. So go enjoy it. It'll be nice weather and a not-too-far trip. Hashtag your intro is too long. <laughs> you think Levi plays this year? I personally don't think he plays this year. I really don't. I think he does not play this year. What is your thoughts on that? If I'm him, man, uh, I'm sticking around to try to get my pension. But really, <laughs> lower back injury, you know, at his position especially, yeah, he's – don't do anything to destroy your body full time, man. And his age. God, he's so young yeah. to have that. It's, it's crazy to think. Hashtag Mike, who do you think will be doing kick returns and punting returns? I think it will be Khalif Raymond probably. That's what I would be going with right now. Maybe somebody else jumps in the mix. There's always going to be someone jump in the mix, but I would put my money on him right now. Hashtag F the Bears. We always do. How do you think that Kansas City game plays out? My Kansas City prediction, our vet defensive backs will get burned first half, come together late, and pull out the win. One pride, baby. Brent, I have Lions winning this game. I do have the Lions winning this game. Um, I can see a situation where you get burnt in the first half. I see a couple interceptions and uh, the Lions being on fire a little bit and win the game by three. What do you think, Dan? I think Kansas City is going to pretty much run what they have the last three or four years, both offensively and defensively, which is going to make them predictable over the next few months. I think Aaron Glenn, though, has a lot more weapons on defense than he's had at any point with the Lions. So I'm going to expect the Lions to run a lot of different sets that Kansas City won't be able to prepare for leading into this game. And because of that, I'm going to take Detroit to win 37-31. Yeah, we're right there, man. We got the same prediction. I know a lot of people saying, I, every time I get into the CBS Sports HQ chat, everyone's saying, oh, you Lions fans are just cocky. No, it's actually not. We're the opposite of cocky over here. We're just confident. We've seen what we're seeing, and we're seeing the buildup. I'm with you. I think they can... Take it to him. Hashtag kicker. Who do you think will win the kicking job? I'm going to go with Michael Badgley. I think it's really his to lose at this point. I know they brought in the kicker for competition. I think he'll, you know, look, I think it's a legit competition, but I do think at this point that Badgley wins this bad boy. What do you think? Do you think anything different there? Badgley on the land side, I think the other kid's fairly accurate. I just don't think he has the leg strength. I think he's got good leg strength. I don't see him kicking consistently anything over 45, 50 yards with accuracy, and that's going to be a problem. Hope we don't choke. Mike, do you see any trap games like Carolina last year? Ooh, great question about trap games. I'm going to go with the Chicago in Chicago game. I think a lot of people just assume they're going to, you know, we're going to roll over them. I would not assume that. Remember last year they damn near beat us. And I think we shouldn't be cocky into that game. I think we should be confident, but we should really prepare like they're, you know, they're a, a team. And teams like the set, I think they can get seven, eight wins. Those are the teams you got to worry about. They're like on the edge. They could be good. You know, they can have really good games sometimes, and then they can play garbage. But I think that would be a team and a game to watch out for in Chicago. What about you? Chargers. Uh, weather change, yeah. time change. It's a long flight, and you're going to lose sleep. They're not a bad team. I mean, not. if you're not on your A game, they could drop some real damage on you. Yeah, I, you know, the Chargers game, I just put – like, I think about it. That's why I put it for a loss when the, when the schedule came out. It's, it's going to be a tough one because Justin Herbert and that offense is going to do better. Definitely going to do better. Mofo Jimbo, Mike, would you do your best to get the Super Bowl if the Lions make it, or is it too much, way too much money for me? I may go to, like, the stadium and be outside of it, having some hot dogs and, and hamburgers or something like that, but there's no way I can afford $20,000 or $50,000 for a ticket. I love my Lions, but that's a way too much for me. Unless Dan pays for it. 
then I'm all for it, Dan. He's going to pay for me to go there. I need a good 50000 What's your thoughts on paying for me to go to the Super Bowl when the Lions get there? You know, I guess we broadcast from there. We're working so we could say that it's a business expense and write it off on our taxes. Oh, definitely. Well, I'll definitely have you write it off on your taxes so I can get in free right then and there. <laughs> Nothing comes out to my account. I would absolutely love it. I like one. Raiders is a trap game. I like that. That is a trap game for sure. I think... I still think we win, but maybe they buy into McDaniel's system a little bit more. They could. I'm just not a McDaniel's fan at all. I think he was a terrible coach for the Denver Broncos, and I think that Patriots are terrible. They just absolutely are. Thank you, Pat Matricia, for destroying our football team. Let's see, if golf plays well, you're going to want at least $45 million. Daniel Jones got $40 million. Would you pay Jared Goff an extension of $45 million a year? If he plays like he did last year and at other points in his year or career, well, I think Brad Holmes said it best. It's a whole lot easier to get worse at that position than it is to get better. So Hooker would have to have really given the coaching staff something in practice for that amount of time for them to say, yeah, we're comfortable going with this kid. Um, but I've been a Lions fan long enough to be able to say this. Eric Kramer won us a playoff game. He led us to nearly a couple others. We let him go to go with Andre Ware. I think most Lions fans, whether you're young or old, can remember how that went. It's going to be an interesting season I for, for many different reasons because if Jared Goff does win off a playoff game and does have a pretty good season like last year, what do you do? You know, that is a quandary that he would be able to do something that number nine, Matthew Stafford, was unable to do, win a playoff game. So that's going to be very intriguing. I do think this team is much better all around talent-wise and coaching-wise, but... Man, this season's big for Jared Goff and the Detroit Lions. So if he does come out and plays you know, 4,500 yards passing and 32 touchdowns to like eight interceptions, there's going to be a lot of people saying the Lions should extend this guy. I want to say, though, thank you so much, Daniel Jones, for screwing us. This is to you, Daniel Jones, and to the Giants organization. Every time... You pay these guys more than what they should get paid. It hurts people like us. Jared Goff, to me, is better than Daniel Jones. I'm just, I'm just saying. Oh, and he just, he hurt us there. Experience over the very end team is a much better talent. I think so. I think Goff is the guy for the next five years. But if that's the case, why did they draft Hendon Hooker, a older rookie, similar? style to Jared Goff, except for he's a mobile. Yep. What do you think they, they got Hooker for? To just be a clipboard, or do you think they really legitimately think that he can be the heir apparent to Jared Goff? Hedging your bet. So you're, you're betting right now Jared Goff can repeat what he did last year. But if he doesn't, you now have got a younger, more mobile, I would say stronger arm quarterback to come in on a cheaper contract where you can while he's developing, you can now afford to extend basically everybody who they draft in the last year or two. But if uh, Goff does play great or even better than last year, you know what? Then you've got a sound backup quarterback that yep. potentially you can trade in the future for more draft capital if that you know if that situation arises. It's called a win-win situation, if you ask me. Either way, it's a win-win. It's something that you don't have to really worry about anymore. So. I I'm fine with it. Whatever happens, happens. I think we're good. You know, we, we got a option for each scenario. If Jared Goff plays great, great. If he gets injured, well, we do got someone that can back there. If he plays bad, well, we got a hooker back there. And hookers are a good thing, especially if you're in Las Vegas in the bunny room. So, look, who is the hooker expert here? I'm sure, actually, a lot of people in the chat are hooker experts. I don't know if it's Hendon. That may not be the hooker that we're talking about here, but I think there's definitely some some hooker experts in here. I know, Dan, the rumor has it that you're a, an expert in hookers. You know, hey, I, Hendon Hooker, I'm an expert on, so I can say that as far as anything else, I plead the fifth. But as it may <laughs> be, um, 
you know, I'd say this. If Hooker and Goff were both coming out in the same draft class, it was up to me who would I pick. I'd pick Hooker just because he's got more intangibles. But that's not the case. Goff's been around. He's been around for a while. And yeah. throughout most of his career, the dude's played pretty well. You can say what you want about how things ended in L.A., but look at the vast majority of his career, and he has been one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, but Hooker, if I had to pick one or the other at the same draft point, I would have went with him, but that's not how things worked out. Hooker is going to have to – he's going to have to be Kurt Warner. Somebody's got to – you know, Goff's got to go down in front of him or flame out and just do bad for him to get a shot. Folks, go ahead and smash that like button. We get to 100 likes, and we will do an ultra combo. I'm setting my ultra combo up right now. We're at 67 likes. Not much to get there. Really not much more to get. We'll do a, a quickie. That's a combo breaker. Now, ultra combo is much better than a combo breaker. I'm just saying out there. I'm just, just saying. If you got questions, put hashtag lines in the chat. Let me know. we got 190 in the building. Go ahead and put your question in the chat. It says, my hooker experience is Malik, and he's great. Okay, Malik Hooker. All right. And you know what I don't like? The Malik Willis comparisons to Hennon Hooker. That's ridiculous. They're two different players. Because I know that's going to come up. I've seen people talk about it. Hennon Hooker is a very accurate quarterback. A lot of experience. 69.6% completion percentage to 27 touchdowns to two interceptions. When it comes to the other, he was very inexperienced. He didn't have a whole lot of time under center. Inaccurate. Needed a lot more time to develop. One guy is ready to play if healthy, and the other guy needs a lot of developing. So that's not – they're two different players. Just an FYI there, Dan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hashtag offensive line heroes. The longer we can keep our offensive line as good as it will golf will remain 100%. And I think that if Halapaluti Vati Vaita is good to go, this offensive line is top three, and Jared Goff is going to pick fools apart because he's got so many weapons. He just stands there and just find whoever's open. And he's good. Whether you like Goff or not, he can find the open guy. He'll do those check downs, and then that guy gets some big-time yards. Ask Brock Wright. He won a dang game because of that. So if you give this man some time and this offensive line some time, we're going to make some noise. What do you think about this offensive line? You know, Mike, I, I think everybody, it's not a secret in the NFL. The Lions have one of the best offensive lines out there. The only thing I would say is, by tie, if he is healthy, the other thing I like about him is if something were to happen to one of our tackles, he's played tackle and at a pretty good level, and I believe it was Philadelphia prior to being here, so he gives you more flexibility as well. You know, if Decker gets hurt, can he move uh, Panay over there and then by tie to, to right tackle? Yeah, or vice versa, and – I think we all know the Lions like versatility everywhere. Versatility is a good thing, absolutely, especially if you're a female and you're a guy. Versatility is always fun. Let's see, West Coast line here says, hashtag FGB, how many touchdowns will the defense get this year? Ooh, he's talking about pick six or fumble six. I'll go with two. It's really difficult to get those. Those are not something easily that can happen. What do you think about a pick six or a fumble six? Seven. Holy shit. Uh, I think I think Aaron Glenn's going to bring the heat on a lot of teams. And you look at that, unless we're proven wrong about some of the younger quarterbacks or less experienced quarterbacks on in our division, plus, you know, on our schedule, man, you got Baker Mayfield. He's probably good for three. You know, and then pick you sixes? Pick up, oh, my. Yeah. We're going against Stafford. We can get a couple. <laughs> So, I mean, that's kind of my point. I think we're going to have a lot of versatility in what we do on defense this year. It's not just going to be straight man-to-man. I think we're going to be able to put the heat on people too, which is going to force, you know, badly timed passes, you know, tip passes, et cetera. And I think we're going to be able to take some to the house. That is amazing. How many guys do you think in the – or how many touchdowns do you think defense will get this year in the comments below? I see 10 and 5. I'm going with two. Pick sixes or fumble six is not something that happens a lot. But that's that's what I got there. That's what I got there. Let's see. Hashtag Lions Mike. I'm going to the Raiders game. My girlfriend is a Raiders fan. I see the Lions between the Raiders by 10 
points. Well, Paul Ginder, I hope your girlfriend is sad by the end of the night. That means the Detroit Lions won that game, and we get the victory. It's going to be interesting. He says, see, the Lions beaten the Raiders by 10 points. That's quite a bit. I'll say, I'll say six. What do you think the score will be between Raiders and Lions? Let's go with a 35-28. Okay, so what, seven there? All right, not too bad. Ten, that means that's a butt whooping. Dwayne Arthur, why do people not like Goff? He is a solid quarterback, especially if he takes a team-friendly deal. I think he's going to have a better year than last. I don't think people hate Jared Goff. I think they're looking for an upgrade. I think that's that's what it is. And if you're a Detroit Lions fan, we're always talking about quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford, Joey Harrington, Dante Culpepper. You know, uh, just name the line. Quarterbacks are always talking about. So that's just one of those deals. I Is there golf haters? Absolutely there's golf haters. Is there golf lovers? Absolutely there's golf truthers out there. Then there's people like me who just don't really care. I just want the best person on the field. And uh, I'm fine with whatever happens. We got one pick six or fumble six. Four of them, three of them, four of them, five of them, ten of them, and five of them. So a lot of people are up there with quite a bit. And then Keith, though, says one against Mahomes. I'll beat the Bucks game. We're ready to see the Lions beat dead ass. Yeah, I like it. Love it. And I want some more of it. So that means Baker Mayfield's getting some Pick six is going his way. Lions, Bucks, what's your score prediction? Lions, I'll do 36. Buccaneers, 24. What do you got? 45-27, Detroit. A whooping. That's an A whooping. 100% butt whooping right there. The C says, if you enjoy the content, please hit that like button, subscribe, and share helps the algorithm for the Lions Talk by Chess Sports. Thank you so much there, Grandizer. Always repping. And we are 18 likes away from a ultra combo. 18. So if you're one of those 18 of 192 that are watching, smash that like button right now. We will get you an ultra combo for your hard work and dedication by clicking a like button. It's really easy to do, and it does help out. He just doesn't act like he inspires the troops as a quarterback should. I you know look I'm not gonna say that I think I I, I don't mind boring quarterbacks because I, I it could be worse you could have a quarterback that's outspoken like a Baker Mayfield that's doing dumb crap and then you got a Jared Goff who's kind of boring maybe he you know that he's not getting into trouble you don't have to worry about it we don't really know how he is in the huddle you don't see that stuff out there all you do is see him talk through interviews and gives the same line that we most quarterbacks do in the NFL. What's your thoughts about him being a boring quarterback or like here he doesn't inspire? 100% correct. I mean, he just doesn't have that kind of personality type, but I would say he's not that dissimilar than Stafford in that regard. I mean, Stafford had his moments. Goff has his moments. It's just not who they are inside. They're, they're not going to be the rah-rah guy. They're also not, like you said, uh, Baker Mayfield. They're not going to get in front of the mic and embarrass the franchise or the team. So it is what it is. If that's why people don't like him, then – then I guess you don't like a good quarterback because he's quiet. Yeah, I got it. Like, it could be worse. You can have a quarterback that that's like a Karen Rogers who is right. always into drama, and it drives me ape. Yeah, you could get lucky, get a Tom Brady, but the Tom Brady's out there is far and few between that are really, like, fiery. And if you have a quarterback that's really fiery like that, you got to be able to be one of the best quarterbacks of all time because people don't take that S. They, you know, if you talk back to them, they people tend to talk back. But when you're the goat, they'll tend to listen. So, you, you and Peyton Manning type of quarterback as well. So, th- I think it's kind of hard to find that. I mean, you you may be looking for like a Derek Carr type of quarterback who is a little bit outspoken. He's got that raw raw in him, but he's also not doing stupid stuff. Either way, I'm I'm not too upset about it. I can understand it, but I'm not upset about it. Hashtag. F to bear. Well, actually, is Sam Laporta getting touchdowns? Says how many touchdowns should Sam Laporta get? I'll say four. How many do you got? I'll go with five. Five and four. Hashtag F to Bears again. What's your two surprise teams to achieve next season? To overachieve next season? Mine are the Bears and the Rams. I like the Rams pick. I think they'll do pretty good there. 
overachieve? Hmm. Man, that's that's tough to think about overachieve. Um, I'll go the Rams. I'll give you one, and then I'll do another one while you're thinking because it's hard. I'll go with uh, Texans just because they're good one. They weren't very good, you know. And you can go with the Bears too, just for the same reason. When you're that bad, if you triple your wins, you really haven't had a great season. But that is significantly better than where you were the year before. And then I will go with the Atlanta Falcons. Maybe they get a couple more wins. Maybe they win the NFC South because that thing is very, very um, poor. And the New Orleans Saints. I think they're going to creep up on people a little bit more. So I'd look for those two teams maybe to be better than what people thought. Folks, we've been on for nearly an hour. There's 200 people in the building and 11 likes to go before a combo breaker. But I appreciate everybody hanging out because I got to get going here. But I'm going to do a combo, an ultra combo anyways. Why? Because I'm a nice guy. Dan, I appreciate you hanging out. Tell the folks about your channel. So Lions Talk Live, uh, while I only do videos once a week this time of year just because there's not a ton of news, and I'll let Mike handle all the daily news. But you know, come the season, we'll do daily breakdowns, daily videos. We'll do uh, live game streams from different locations. You're welcome to come out and see. And then uh, the day after the game, we tend to break down the video, see what the coaches saw, talk about different players, their mechanics, and maybe why they were successful or why they failed. Appreciate everybody hanging out. Next week, live show, 4 p.m., same time, same place. And we have a hell of a lot of fun. And we'll see how it goes from there. We're getting close to training camp, a couple months away, folks. Let's F and go. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless uh, A sea of the aimless, I don't wanna be one of the nameless I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me, I exist to write my own story I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory yeah. Don't want a life that is complacent or possibly boring I just want a life that is worth every day exploring yeah. My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, yeah